Welcome to an overview of the installation steps and techniques for a KitchenAid built-in refrigerator. Installation should be performed by a qualified installer. This demonstration features a French door bottom mount stainless steel refrigerator and is not a replacement for the printed installation guide. Always read and obey all safety messages. Please read through the entire installation guide for your product and gather all tools and parts as instructed. Please consult and follow all local governing codes and ordinances. Warning! Explosion hazard. Keep flammable materials and vapors, such as gasoline, away from the refrigerator. Failure to do so can result in death, explosion, or fire. Make certain that the floor under the unit is clear and level with the surrounding flooring and can support the weight of the refrigerator and contents included which is at least 600 pounds. The finished opening must be square, plumb, and level. The width of the required opening varies by model, but is 35 and 1 half inches to 35 and 3 quarters inches for 36 inch units, 41 and 1 half inches to 41 and 3 quarters inches for 42 inch units, and 47 and 1 half inches to 47 and 3 quarters inches for 48 inch units. The depth of the required opening is 24 inches. The height of the required opening is 84 inches. The location must permit all doors and drawers to open freely and without obstruction according to the clearance measurements outlined in the installation guide. For corner wall conditions, an additional minimum clearance distance of 5 inches is required. More clearance may be required if you are installing custom overlay panels, custom handles, or extended handles. Installation requires a minimum of 6 inches of open space above the grill panel or above a false front when present. The refrigerator is designed to vent out the front at the top of the upper vent grill. A minimum of a half inch of clearance is needed above the top grill for ventilation and to be able to remove grill after installation. Standard installation requires a solid soffit or cabinet bottom 84 inches above the floor. If a soffit or cabinet isn't available, or higher than 84 inches, then the refrigerator must be braced with anti-tip boards. Anti-tip boards are not provided with the product and should be measured and installed from pieces of 2x4 wood boards and be long enough to fully cover the width of the housing. The anti-tip boards must overlap the rear of the compressor housing by at least 2 inches. Locate and mark all stud locations on the rear wall 80 to 90 inches above the floor. Important. Before drilling, make certain there are no electrical wires or plumbing behind the wall that the screws could penetrate. Depending on the depth of the opening, cut and attach one or more 2x4 wood boards to as many wall studs as possible with wood screws, making certain the wood screws have sufficient length to penetrate the studs by at least 1 and 1 half inch. All installations must meet local plumbing codes and ordinances. The water supply shutoff valve should be located in a base cabinet on either side of the refrigerator or other easily accessible area. Do not use a self-piercing type or 3 16 inch saddle valve, which reduces water flow and clogs more easily. If a saddle type valve meets with local plumbing codes, your refrigerator dealer has a kit available that contains a 1 quarter inch saddle valve with a union and copper tubing. Water supply lines may come up through the floor or through cabinet sides. For cabinet conditions, the access hole through the cabinet must be within one half inch of the rear wall. For floor conditions, a half inch hole should be drilled within the rectangular area that is at least six inches from either side and no more than one inch from the back wall. A cold water supply with water pressure between 30 and 120 PSI is required to operate the ice maker. Extend the water line beyond the opening by using flexible tubing if it complies with local codes. It's not recommended for the ice maker to be connected to a softened water supply. Before attaching the water tubing to the refrigerator, flush the water supply line to remove any particles or air from the line and check for leaks. Allow enough water to flow so that the water becomes clear. Allow at least 26 inches of flexible water tubing to be loose at the front of the refrigerator for connecting to the refrigerator. Tape the tubing to the floor along its length 7 inches from the left side of the refrigerator so that it will pass underneath without interference. Warning! 
Tip over hazard. Refrigerator is top heavy and tips easily when not completely installed. Keep doors taped closed until refrigerator is completely installed. Use two or more people to move and install refrigerator. Failure to do so can result in death or serious injury. Remove and set aside any literature. The side trims give a finished edge on each side of the refrigerator. This trim overlaps the face of the cabinetry. If you do not have adequate ceiling height to stand the refrigerator upright, the tipping radius can be reduced by removing the top grill and side trims. Remove the trim by first removing the grill panel. Grasp both ends of the top grill. Pull out at the bottom of the grill to release the clips. Lift the grill straight up. Lay the grill on a soft surface and turn the master power switch to off or disconnect power at the circuit breaker. Remove the six screws attaching each cabinet side trim to the refrigerator and remove the side trim. Do not remove the tape, door bracing, or the protective film until the refrigerator is in its final operating location. If the unit has been laid on its back or side, allow it to stand upright for a minimum of 24 hours before connecting power. A unit that must move its side must be left side leaned and transported left side down. Warning, electrical shock hazard. Plug into a grounded three-prong outlet. Do not remove ground plug. Do not use an adapter. Do not use an extension cord. Failure to follow these instructions can result in death, fire, or electrical shock. Make sure the switch at the top of the cabinet is in the off position. Follow the National Electrical Code and Local Code Ordinances when installing the receptacle. If a receptacle is already installed, consult a licensed qualified electrician to verify it meets requirements. A 115 volt, 60 hertz, AC only, 15 or 20 amp fused grounded electrical supply is required. An isolated circuit in the electrical panel or breaker box that serves only the refrigerator is recommended. A grounded three-prong electrical outlet should be located at the proper distance above the floor and from the right side cabinetry or end wall. Avoid using an outlet that is controlled by a switch or has ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI protection as this could result in nuisance tripping. Plug into a grounded three-prong outlet. Roll the refrigerator straight back, slowly and evenly into the opening, taking care not to scratch the surrounding cabinetry with any part of the unit that protrudes or may have sharp edges. Check to be sure the water supply line isn't kinked and that the power cord is on top of the refrigerator. All four leveling legs must contact the floor to support and stabilize the full weight of the refrigerator. Use a 5 16 inch socket driver to turn the leveling bolts clockwise to extend the front and rear legs to the floor. Continuing to rotate the leveling bolts clockwise will raise that corner of the refrigerator, while rotating counterclockwise will lower that corner of the refrigerator. Continue to gradually adjust both sets of leveling bolts so that the refrigerator is level left to right and front to back and aligned with the adjacent cabinets. Engage the anti-tip boards by continuing to raise the refrigerator evenly until the top of the refrigerator is making contact with the bottom of the anti-tip boards. The leveling legs only extend to a maximum of 1 and 1 quarter inches below the rollers. Connect the water supply line to the refrigerator. Turn on the water supply and check all connections for leaks. Door swing comes set at 130 degrees with an option of 110 or 90 degree settings. Panel ready models come set to 110 degrees. If door adjustments are required to achieve the proper spacing, see the installation guide for detailed instructions on how to adjust the doors. There are two pieces to the base grill assembly to allow for a custom fit. Remove the film from the base grill and snap the skirt onto the grill if necessary. To size the grill properly, score the skirt at the appropriate V groove with a utility knife and then break the skirt at the score line. Attach the base grill assembly to the refrigerator right side first using the two black screws provided. Turn the refrigerator switch to the on position. To install the top grill panel, hook the grill panel brackets onto the top mounting pins and pull down to snap the spring clips over lower mounting the pins. Remove any remaining protective film. 
remove all packing material from inside the refrigerator and the installation site. Install any shelves and bins removed during installation. Check that the compressor and all lights are operating properly. Controls are preset by the factory to the midpoint. Adjust as needed. Turn on the ice maker and the water system will flush through normal operation. Remind the customer to discard the first two to three batches of ice. The installation of your KitchenAid built-in refrigerator is now complete. Make sure to let the customer know that it could take up to 24 hours to make the first batch of ice. Provide all product documentation and guides to the customer. Should you have any questions about the installation process for KitchenAid built-in refrigerators, please contact us at 1-800-422-1230 or visit our website at www.kitchenaid.com.